Ladies and gentlemen, we will now begin the last session. The theme of the third session is practical cases of responding to climate change and environmental issues. We will discuss how each country and public housing uh, policy is responding to the emerging challenge of climate change. Today, we have presenters from Denmark, uh, Korea and France for this session. First, uh, I would like to ask the chair, Mr. Jonggun Kim of um, SH to lead the session. Hello. First of all, I would like to extend my gratitude to our viewers on Changshino TV YouTube channel. And I would also like to thank our presenter from Denmark, France, as well as our discussant from Denmark for joining us here today. Hello, I am Hello, I am Ogunu. I am An Zhang Hyun of SH. The topic for this session is climate change and environmental issues. Today, we have presenters from Denmark and Paris who have set examples in their climate change response and also we have speakers from Korea London Housing Corporation LH as well as a presenter from SHCC Seoul Housing and Communities and Co Corporation so I believe that this will be a very meaningful session for us all Uh, we will not hear the presentations as they have been uploaded on YouTube. And if you need to jog your memory, then uh, what we're going to do is I'm going to provide you a very brief summary of the presentations. And then I am going to ask each presenter to introduce yourself and uh, your affiliation. And also, I would like you to give us a summary of your presentation. And then I will ask the discussant to uh, make comments about the presentations and also ask questions to the presenters. Then we can continue to exchange opinions among the uh, presenters and the discussant. There were four presentations as part of this session. And there was an unfamiliar concept uh, for Korea in one of the presentations, and that was circular economy presented by Denmark and also Paris. For those of you who are watching us on Changshino TV, you may not be familiar with what the term means. So let me briefly uh, explain what circular economy refers to. Alan MacArthur Foundation of the UK began the concept of circular economy and the Netherlands has implemented the idea in its urban planning and also a lot of European cities are using a circular economy as a concept to respond to climate change and to achieve uh, net zero carbon. This basically means that the inflow and the outflow of resources should be managed in order to reduce the consumption of resources and to reduce the output of any wastes. So this is really to reinforce the metabolism of the city. And this concept has been applied to a lot of different cities. And so that's why we have this idea of circular cities that we see across the world. I heard all the presentations myself. The first presentation by Copenhagen. Uh, now this city is one of the very first cities to achieve carbon um, neutrality. And it has a target to achieve carbon neutrality in the near future. And uh, they d introduced the roadmap for the future. And 
And also the existing stocks represent more than 70% of the uh, total uh, buildings, and especially in terms of the circular economy. You also talked about a lot of projects that you engage and also you emphasize the importance of governance. So I was very impressed by that presentation. And uh, my presenter sitting on my left from um, LH presented on the Green New Deal policy announced by the Korean government recently. So he gave an overview of the Korean New Deal and what LH is doing for green remodeling based on some real case, pro real life projects. And we have announced a plan to achieve carbon neutrality in the near future as well. And next, we had a presentation from Paris Habitat, who talked about ecological transition, which is a hot topic around the world these days. Especially, one of the most impressive points was the U uh, was in relation to the UN Sustainable Development Goals and the projects that are carried out in relation to these goals. Climate response is one of the UN Sustainable Development Goals, uh, achieving post-carbon city and uh, connecting this with the idea of urban regeneration. So I could see um, a lot of impressive uh, accomplishments on the Paris side. And near the conclusion, the green uh, remodeling project at the end of the presentation was also very uh, impressive and also easy to understand and circular economy by Amadoichi and various programs, platform models have been introduced and it was uh, it provided a great learning for uh, our corporation and I'm sure that we can benchmark a lot of your projects. Last but not least, we had a presenter from our host um, Seoul Housing and Communities Corporation or SHCC. This is a housing corporation representing Seoul and his presentation focused on the response to fine dust issues, which is a big problem in Seoul. Recently, smart technologies and green technologies have been converged um, in our fight against the fine dust. I would like to thank the four speakers once again for preparing great presentations under the theme. So in be on behalf of the organizer, I would like to thank all speakers. And I would like to ask Einstein Leonardson to begin by introducing yourself briefly as well as the organization that you work for. And also, could you kindly summarize the core points of your presentation, please? But uh, uh, Mr. Leonardson um, left. Um, so we will first hear from the Bernard Brett. Yes, um, I hope that you hear me. Okay, it seems to be. Um, Anyan Seo, first of all, uh, thanks a lot for giving to Paris Habitat the uh, opportunity to participate to this uh, very uh, useful, fruitful, inspiring uh, conference. Uh, my name so is Bertrand Brett, and I am the uh, head of the uh, International Affairs Department of uh, Paris Habitat. Uh, uh, so my, my, my colleague, uh, my, my three colleagues in their presentations um, uh, was focused, uh, first of all, in a, in a brief presentation of uh, our uh, climate strategy and then to, to show uh, two uh, practical projects we, we, we put forward. Uh, one word about the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, climate plan we, we, we adopt, uh, which of course is a part of the uh, Paris 
climate plan adopted by the city hall in 1918 the uh, main target is to uh, to to get paris become uh, a low carbon a neutral carbon city by 2050 and to reduce his consumption energy of uh, 45% by the same uh, year. Uh, we include our real estate in a post-carbon city and we, we do also uh, promote um, a carbon, a low carbon program and with the uh, uh, different uh, goals which are very pre precise. The first one is to reduce consumption by 35% with bioclimatic design and action of uh, commissioning. Second, to reduce carbon footprint by 40% by uh, developing thermal renovation, and also by giving a second life to the building as an alternative to the demolition. And of course, it means to increase our renew renewable uh, energy. But our uh, climate plan doesn't allow uh, concern the uh, policy of energy consumption. It's also a way to encourage water management and biodiversity uh, and uh, by the same way to promote a kind of uh, ecological transition uh, by uh, used biosourced uh, and bio-based materials, wood, hemp for example, but also cork uh, wooden wool for thermal insulation. Regarding the two uh, projects uh, presented by my, uh, by my colleague, one is more dedicated to the retrofit, to the reuse of the heat produced by the tube, the underground public transport. And we work hand in hand with the uh, uh, public transport, Paris Public Transport Company, uh, to um, to reduce the heat produced in one of the uh, railway station uh, and to put it in uh, to re to reuse it in uh, one of uh, our building in addition of with the uh, uh, city uh, heat uh, system uh, it's very innovative uh, very performant and which is also very important uh, very cheap uh, for our tenants, because uh, it is also one of the aim of such an innovation. It's to reduce the uh, the financial part of uh, consumption paid by our tenants. And the second uh, project is uh, dedicated to the reuse of uh, materials that we found when we refurbish old building on it, we, we thought was to say that it's before we, we put them off uh, and now we try to find how to re reuse these uh, seat materials on these former materials in new functions. And she gives a lot of examples of uh, reusing these kind of materials. Well, here we are. Next. Now, in relation to Paris, we saw on the press about how you are creating um, farming land, uh, farming sites on the rooftop and turning your city green. And that was very impressive to see. And next, I would like to ask Mr. Leonardson of Denmark to introduce yourself. Are you here? Are you connected? Hello and uh, good afternoon in Korea. It's early morning in Europe. Uh, my name is Eustin Lennertsen and I work in the municipality of Copenhagen uh, in the Department of uh, Integrated Urban Renewal. Um, the situation in Copenhagen is that we have uh, adopted an uh, ambitious climate neutrality plan back in 2012. Uh, aiming for neutrality in 2025. We have divided that into three roadmaps and we are in the, our final stage uh, of, the, uh, of, of the third roadmap. We have 
uh, come a long way, uh, especially when it comes to, to converting uh, fossil-based uh, energy production, uh, transforming it from uh, coal and, uh, and, and oil into um, especially wind energy, but also biomass and incineration of, of waste. That uh, has brought us quite far and close to the goal, but we are not near. But we will not be able to 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 um, to meet the goal unless we also look at how we uh, how, how the consumption of energy is, and especially engaging the citizens in this transformation. Therefore, we have uh, made a cross sector initiative called Climate Task Force, where we now are trying to engage uh, ordinary citizens in transforming, uh, being part of the green transition. When it comes to the more vulnerable areas, uh, the more disadvantaged areas, there's also a social issue. So we are also focusing on having what we call a just and fair green transition that investments uh, should not only benefit uh, the climate targets, but also benefit people's social um, living standards. Those are the two main issues that we are uh, facing right now. And um, a part of it, as you mentioned in, in, in your beginning, is also to reduce um, the climate footprint or the ecological footprint by introducing circular economy that we cannot uh, keep on explore um, virgin materials from, uh, from, from the nature. That's not sustainable. So those are some of the initiatives. And uh, together with Peter, uh, who is uh, with us today, a couple of years ago, we uh, made a transformation in uh, South in, the, in, 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 in a neighborhood in the, the south of Copenhagen uh, where we uh, made the Energy Forum South Harbor and the Circular Economy Hub South Harbor. Uh, that was uh, in, an example how to, 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 uh, to, to, to engage uh, communities. And uh, since then, we are now uh, in the progress of uh, taking this thinking, these models, into other parts of the city. So uh, I think this is also an example of how uh, international communities like Climate Kick, uh, like your conference, actually can make a very local and very concrete imprint on everyday people's life. Thank you. Thank you. The example of Copenhagen was uh, widely introduced in Korea as well. And we learn a lot uh, by actually visiting Copenhagen as well. I look forward to future exchanges of ideas as well. Next, I would like to introduce our Korean speaker from um, LH, Chang Hyun An. Shall I begin? Yes, please. Hello. I am An Chang Hyun of LH, your Korea Land and Housing Corporation. LH has a capital of 184 trillion Korean won and as of June this year we have 9600 members in the corporation so we are the largest rental housing developing entity and uh, we are responsible for developing uh, the apartments in Korea public apartments in Korea my presentation was focused on the Korean New Deal policy, especially with focus on green remodeling. Uh, we in I introduced uh, our pilot complexes for green remodeling. To summarize the Korean New Deal, it can be understood as follows. We have the Digital New Deal and the Green New Deal, and also we have another pillar of reinforcing the safety net. The objective is as follows. 
Until now, we've been a fast follower. We hope to be the first mover. And also, we want to become a low-carbon economy instead of a carbon-led economy. And also, we want to move from an un, uh, an into an equal society and an equal uh, community for all. The, the project will invest 160 trillion Korean won until uh, 2025 in order to uh, create 1.9 million new jobs. By 2030, we hope to become carbon neutral. Therefore, by 2025, we hope to uh, use the 160 trillion Korean won budget in order to create the foundation for our low carbon economy of the future. In our Green New Deal, uh, one of the aspects is green remodeling, which is to renovate uh, more than 15 year, uh, so old, old public rental housings that are more than 15 years old, so that we can actually renovate them into more livable and pleasant houses. Four story building with about 12 households was remodeled as a pilot project in order to increase energy efficiency. So that was one pilot complex or one pilot um, housing complex that I introduced. Thank you. Korea Land Housing Corporation or LH is uh, a national corporation for carrying out national housing policies. Next, we have our last presenter from Seoul Housing and Communities Corporation or SHCC, which is responsible for Seoul's housing policies. Mr. Ogunu, please. Hello. I am Ogun Woo at SHCC. As has been introduced, SHCC is responsible for providing, supplying, and managing public houses in Seoul. It was established in the 1980s, and currently it manages about 200,000 units of public houses. It's specialized for urban regeneration and urban planning of Seoul. Today, I would like in my presentation, I address the issue of fine dust, which falls in the large context of climate change. This is a really urgent and severe problem felt by the citizens of South Korea. And SH is working on various measures to reduce the level of fine dust, especially since President Kim Seong took office. We have uh, been taking this more seriously. In uh, May 2018, uh, for the first time as a corporation, we announced a plan to reduce fine dust and we established a task force responsible for reducing fine dust. And in my presentation, I shared some of the projects that we carried out to reduce fine dust. I uh, presented about the current status as well as an overview of fine dust in Korea and uh, some of our policies, including physical policies, chemical policies, as well as biological policies. And also I introduced some real life examples of these policies. I cannot go into details at this point, but just to summarize, the biggest policy is to actually prevent any generation of fine dust fundamentally. And our second measure is to reduce the fine dust near the source where it has been generated. And number three, we hope to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and we like to uh, prioritize biological measures together with uh, chemical and physical measures. Thank you very much. Thank you. That was a brief introduction of the presenters as well as their presentations. Uh, I'm sure it was a great help to our audience watching this on Cheongshino TV YouTube channel. Uh, in Korea, during winter time, we have a high level of fine dust. Currently, we are wearing the mask because of COVID-19. And even before COVID-19, we, we were used to wearing uh, a facial mask during the winter because of the fine dust issue. Now, let us start the discussion for session three. Uh, I have not introduced myself. I am the chair of session three. I am Kim Jong-kun, head of Fine Dust uh, Task Force at SHCC.
We have uh, a one discussant for this session from Denmark, from Embassy of Denmark in Korea. We have Mr. Peter Norman Vengspo, who is joining. It's a pleasure to meeting you, um, everybody. My name is, is uh, Peter Norman Vengsbo. Besides being an air pollution specialist, I am also having the privilege to be both working together with Paris Municipality and Copenhagen Municipality. I'm currently located here in Korea, in Seoul, where I'm heading the Danish uh, Innovation Center at the Danish Embassy. What What of the target we are uh, dealing with is trying to promote new demonstration projects in cities, try to work specific on practical cases where we can demonstrate new technologies, working specific on energy retrofitting, on circular economy, and, and uh, sensor technologies to, to measure air pollution. So let me uh, uh, start the, the discussion um, from, from Oystein uh, in the, from the city I originally come from Copenhagen. As Einstein is, is mentioned, uh, Copenhagen municipality are planning to be the first capital in the world to be CO2 neutral in 2025. It's a very ambitious target. It's also a very challenging target. It's only five years away. I know Copenhagen municipality are facing um, very difficult um, measure to, to reach that target. So you, Einstein, um, please allow me to ask you, how do you measure your CO2 reduction potential when you are doing energy retrofitting in South Harbor? Well, um, we, we have a, a, a common agreement with the utility companies so uh, one of the um, sort of um, the more nitty gritty is is uh, to to uh, achieve uh, um, an agreement with the utility companies on uh, providing data. Uh, a data driven uh, change, I think, is essential. Uh, so uh, we had uh, made. Um, uh, a first agreement with uh, the two main utility companies, the one that's providing uh, central heating, uh, sorry, district heating, uh, and uh, the electricity uh, utility company um, on, on creating a baseline for uh, South Harbor. We are now taking this method into the city and uh, spreading it uh, in, uh, in new neighborhoods. Um, and uh, making a baseline makes it possible to 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 also uh, measure change. We have also uh, experimented with more detailed um, sensors uh, in apartment blocks. Uh, there is uh, quite a difference between um, the knowledge you get from uh, the central system and then you get what you get from a more distributed system. I uh, I know you well. I know that you have uh, Viking blood in you in your veins. You hunt where the gold is. So when you do your work, do you uh, prioritize uh, the refurbishment initiative according to return of investment, or do Copenhagen municipality prioritize the low hanging fruits according? to capture as much as CO2 uh, reduction as possible? Well, I, I, I don't see that there necessarily needs to be any conflict between the two. Um, I think we, we, to a certain extent, we have, have uh, picked most of the low-hanging fruits uh, and that we are now challenged with the very difficult and more complex issues. Uh, apart from, 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 uh, from housing, uh, also, mobility uh, is a, a, a huge energy consumption um, or and a CO2 emitter. So uh, what we are now looking into is also how can we provide um, electrical infrastructure 
changing from from uh, petrol based cars and vehicles into electric is not only a matter of people buying different uh, vehicles but also that there is uh, 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 an infrastructure uh, for for uh, loading uh, the new uh, the, the new vehicles so uh, i think that's one of the things where we we actually also need very much the the citizens engagement because uh, central petrol stations uh, large companies can make but if we have to have distributed electrical um, uh, supply for for cars it will often mean that it is more individual or small owners that shall uh, put it up so uh, that's what it makes it more complex it's not easy but it's easier to to make a deal with shell or with british petrol uh, than it is to 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 make a, a, an agreement with uh, we have currently i think more than 7500 different individual uh, apartment uh, associations in the city uh, so you have to make individual uh, agreement with that so uh, i think that's one of the challenges uh, and uh, yeah, I think I'll stop there. But I also know you have uh, your your height, uh, your heart in the in the right place. But you are, <laughs> are soft like you. And when you're working uh, in the poorest neighborhood in Copenhagen, I understand that the municipality are also enforcing you to improve uh, quality of life, create uh, job creation locally. Can you try to elaborate a little bit on, on how you have been um, improving life quality and engaging the local community and in, increased uh, local jobs uh, for, for, for marginalized people in, uh, in, in South Papua? Yeah. Um, when it comes to retrofitting and, and, and energy consumption, um, indoor climate uh, is uh, and thereby also livability uh, is is uh, is strongly connected one of the big mistakes that were made in the late 70s and the beginning of the 80s was to insulate uh, but without thinking of the of uh, of uh, the the local uh, environmental consequences in the houses so we had mold uh, we had uh, drought, we had uh, uh, also often uh, more dark uh, living rooms when you insulate, uh, the, the, the windows will be smaller, uh, meaning there will be less daylight in, in the apartment. So uh, uh, we have tried uh, over the years also to, to, to look more into what is uh, the living conditions inside the flat. Uh, not only on the energy consumption itself. And it also shows that if we have a combination of uh, having these more technical uh, energy um, um, uh, transformations or, or retrofitting, uh, and also engaging uh, those who actually live in the, or work in the, in, in, in the buildings, we can uh, have uh, a far more um, uh, impact on, on, on both energy use and also on, on climate impact and uh, on people's uh, uh, spending, that, that uh, we lower the costs, uh, which uh, energy cost can for high paid people be uh, pretty marginal, but for marginal people, uh, energy cost can be an issue. Uh, and we have in South Harbor, uh, you and I, we uh, made the uh, the the hackathon or, or the the uh, the challenge of of uh, giving local uh, entrepreneurs the challenge to say, now we are in the process of of changing this community. How can this be accompanied by uh, local businesses as well? Um, and. Uh, we had over uh, a period of uh, half a year, we had uh, 10 com uh, competition, uh, competitors uh, looking into different 
uh, possible uh, in innovations on, on uh, a combination of uh, reduced energy, uh, reduction of energy use, uh, more circular uh, economy, uh, and uh, with a social benefit. One of the finest examples of that uh, ended up being an urban farm, um, where uh, instead of transporting uh, greeneries uh, around the globe, uh, that could be locally produced. And uh, some of, of, of uh, the functions in such a local farm is, uh, is an opportunity for uh, more vulnerable uh, citizens that maybe not can take a, a, a job like the ones we have here. Yeah, I, I can simply not wait until we have a, a vaccine for, for COVID-19 <laughs> and uh, I can start doing a tour uh, for uh, yeah. Seoul housing, both to Paris and to Copenhagen, and to show the, the unique uh, demonstration site that you have, you have been working with. It's, it's absolutely fantastic what you have been doing, engaging uh, communities, engaging researchers, and engaging the private sector. In, in, in Copenhagen municipality, we, we call you the king of South Harbor. So imagine <laughs> you, if, if you would be, uh, if you would be uh, the mayor for the day, one, one day you will wake up, you will be the mayor of the day, just for one day. What, uh, what would you do? And what uh, would uh, your kind of uh, recommendation for soul housing be? Well, as a, um, as a mayor of Copenhagen, um, well, actually, I think our mayor uh, does an uh, amazing job, and and we are uh, retrofitting both in the private and the public sector like never before. Uh, one of the uh, the effects of of uh, the COVID uh, nineteen is that that uh, both the uh, local authorities and 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 the government is really pouring resources into energy retrofitting. What I think if if I should put uh, put more into that uh, would be uh, to 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 enforce more uh, cross silo corporations. It is still very much a silo thinking uh, that that um, that 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 we are not uh, both locally but also centrally uh, cross sexual uh, make make so cross sexual corporations um, too many small boxes that needs to be be fitted together. So uh, I would say um, that that would probably be my recommendation. Great. Thank you so much, Sir Einstein. Pleasure to, to be speaking with you again. And it actually leads uh, to a very nice connection to, to, uh, to the second um, presentation of uh, Yan Yuan An uh, from Seoul Housing. Uh, the whole, it's, it's uh, in June, uh, the Korean government uh, announced the Korean New Deal, one of the largest globally uh, green and digital uh, investment packets. Uh, it's amazing um, to see how, uh, I really look forward to see how it will transition here in Korea. There is a focus on, on uh, energy retrofitting of public building and specific on schools. They are aiming to, um, to energy retrofit 3,000 schools uh, across uh, Korea towards 2025. The presentation is, is highlighting uh, this issue of, of energy retrofitting. But in order for get it running, and in order for us learning from uh, Oystein's recommendation, we do need to knowledge share more. So, so housing, how do you knowledge share with other housing corporations and cities in, in Korea? I know you are one of the largest. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, it's not Seoul Housing. I'm, I'm talking about Korean Land and Housing Corporation. So the second presentation, the demonstration project of green remodeling business. My mistake, sorry. So um, Korean Land and Housing Corporation, how are you trying to share your knowledge with other cities and housing associations to scale out accordingly to the Korean New Deal? 
Did you understand my question? Thank you very much for your question. About this time last year, I stayed in Copenhagen with my wife for a week. And I'm very happy to address you. I remember Tivoli Garden and your museums. Uh, it was a very impressive city. First of all, thank you for your questions. This year, we have this vision from, uh, of transitioning from fast follower to first mover under the Korean New Deal. This is year one for Korean New Deal. In 2022 and 2023, we will have turning points. And by 2025, we hope to achieve our targets. And uh, we do have the retrofitting projects for schools, etc. We have about 3,000 public facilities, which we have planned for green remodeling. Also, we have a plan to retrofit about 220,000 public rental housings using green remodeling. Also, we hope to create more than 240,000 jobs uh, to do that. We have to make sure that our policies become successful. And once our policies become somewhat successful, we will explore opportunities to cooperate and exchange ideas with other cities. And we actually do have a global projects with Vietnam and Kuwait and countries around the world with, with which we are cooperating. So we do hope to expand these global projects so that the Korean New Deal can expand globally and can save energy and help us move toward low carbon economy. So I will be very happy to work with other cities and countries. Great. I'm, I'm really happy that the Korean Land and, and Housing Corporation are having that interest and, and you are in a very uh, fantastic situation. In this forum, we have two of the first mover economies in Denmark with cities, Pacific, Paris, and Copenhagen. And I definitely believe that that, that um, triangle, Paris, Copenhagen, and the uh, Korean cities would actually be a very uh, fast uh, engine to test new demonstration, test new innovation projects uh, around green remodeling. Um, and I think one of the one of the aims that I have seen in, in Paris and in Copenhagen is the whole concept of creating living labs where researchers and public sectors, the private sectors are all working, testing and validating all these new technologies. Is that a concept of creating testbed, living lab, practical cases, open source data where people and researchers can co-develop, co co-learn and and, uh, and and facilitate the smarter city is that something you would uh, is that something you are engaged in already at a lh as i said earlier knows that we cannot do green modeling all by ourselves because it's such a big project so in october this year Green Remodeling Consultative Body was established. This includes uh, public organizations, members from the academy, and many other entities, so that we can discuss together how we can implement green modeling and how we can actually make it successful and effective. So we continue to do research and discuss on this topic so that we can uh, make our green modeling successful. So that's why the consultative body was established. It brings together KDI, the University of Policy from the Academy, and also we have Korean Architects Association, and also we have Korea Social Enterprise Promotion Agency, and we have Korea Energy Technology Validation Agency. So it brings together a lot of these entities together so that we can work together on this front. And I have to ask, um, now listening to Einstein's uh, presentation about engage, uh, engagement of the, the civil society, how do you develop the projects uh, with input from civil society, NGOs, um, or is that something you do? Yes. Uh, 
So we do engage the public sector, the academy, uh, through consultative body as for civic engagement. We are currently exploring how to bring about more civic engagement. What we can do is we can leverage social enterprises to bring in civic engagement. And another thing we can do is uh, Korea has local governments, for example, Seoul Metropolitan Government, Gyeonggi Provincial Government, and then there are the municipal governments under provincial governments like Gyeonggi uh, Gyeong City, etc. And each municipal government can uh, can go ahead with their own green modeling remodeling project. So LH and city governments sign agreements so that we can exchange opinions and ideas. And also we can provide training and uh, know-how transfer. Just yesterday, Songnam city of Gyeonggi-do provincial government signed uh, an MOU with uh, LH so that we will work together for green modeling so that our commitment can uh, can spread to the private sector as well. For example, we have a green remodeling center and this center does not directly support the private sector in green remodeling but rather we provide about 3% uh, subsidy in the interest rate for the private sector. So we have these uh, ways to e uh, incorporate the private sector so that they can work on saving the energy and this benefit can be returned to our citizens. As such, engagement of the private sector is uh, one of our focus areas and we provide these uh, budgetary and other support for the private sector. Great, thank you. And my last question to you at your last, last slide, you are, you are saying that you want to, to conquer the world with dreams. <laughs> About dreams, besides a wish for 2021, besides uh, having a vaccine for COVID-19, what, what do you hope that the um, green uh, remodeling um, for, for for LH um, could facilitate? What, what is your big dream for 2021? Yes, as I said earlier, this year is the beginning of our green remodeling initiative. We invested about 17.6 billion Korean won as a matching fund. So we have a five to five ratio between us and the government. So we invest 17.6 billion and the government also invests 17.6 billion. Next year, we will have a much larger budget, more than tenfold what we have this year to uh, push the green remodeling initiative. So this is only the beginning due to COVID-19 we are facing a difficult time and we saw how a pandemic can shut down the economy. And I know that next year will also behold a lot of uncertainties for us. However, we remain hopeful. We continue to have this dream and commitment so that in five years time, by 2025, we will be able to achieve our targets by investing 160 a trillion Korean won uh, and also uh, hundreds of thousands of new jobs. The Paris Great. Climate Change Agreement stipulates that 64.5 tons of greenhouse gases have to be reduced in the area of buildings. This is an enormous amount of reduction. However, I'm sure that this can happen uh, with our commitment to reduce uh, emissions in houses starting from houses and moving on to bigger buildings as well. And that will allow us to achieve the target of carbon reduction under the Paris Climate, um, uh, climate Agreement. And Copenhagen, Paris and Korea can work together and share knowledge in order for us to become closer to our dream. Thank you. Uh, thank you so much, um, Paris have shown the world how to do it. Political, architectural, urban planning. It's amazing. It's amazing to see what journey Paris municipality have been, been doing the last many years. You've been through a ecological revolution and is one of the capital in, in Europe 
leading the way on circular economy, urban refurbishment, and many other sustainable uh, pathways, as presented in your uh, in your very uh, good uh, presentation. You're working in in very elegant uh, footprints of your Lord Mayor, Annabelle Hidalgo. She's a very uh, influential uh, voice in that transition of Paris. Can you perhaps uh, elaborate a little bit about what role your Lord Mayor have played for Paris Habitat and uh, the transition she have done, not just in Paris or across cities in, in France, but actually for for the world as being a chairman of C40. Yes, thanks a lot. Well, uh, first of all, thanks for all these compliments, but I would like to share these compliments also with a lot of other cities which are like Paris, like Copenhagen, like Seoul and so on. Uh, also that put forward the, uh, the fight against the uh, the, the global warming. Uh, reg just regarding the uh, the Paris policy, of course, I'm not really a, a spokesman of the Paris uh, municipality, but uh, I, I can try to uh, to make an effort and to, to to be for once what I am not really. Uh, the um, the involvement of the uh, the local government is first of all an old one because it was in fact prepared in a way by the former uh, mayor, Mr. Deladoe. And then it is true that Mrs. Anne Hidalgo, uh, how to say, uh, put uh, her feet uh, on the speed uh, about this, uh, this matter. Here is uh, what is a kind of a Bible uh, about the uh, Climate uh, Action Plan. This is the Paris Climate Action Plan, who has been adopted in May 2018. You can easily find it in uh, Google if you just uh, put Paris Climate Action Plan and you will find the, the English uh, version easily. Uh, the main idea is to make uh, Paris greener and to make Paris uh, a resilient, an inclusive, a carbon neutral and 100 renewable energy city by 2050. Uh, all these items are as important each one as in each other because they are uh, gathering what is a sustainable development policy, which is not only uh, an issue of energy consumption or, or low carbon policy, but that includes also um, all uh, that is a sort uh, of jobs, of good quality of life, of improvement uh, in the uh, living uh, environment, in the good quality of uh, production of buildings and, uh, and so on. Uh, so just to give you some uh, concrete targets, uh, by 2050, to make Paris a zero local greenhouse gas emission, uh, to reduce 80% of the Paris carbon footprint, footprint uh, to uh, get uh, Paris 100% uh, renewable energies, and to uh, reduce the, the energy consumption by 15% through all the territory. Uh, here are the, the main goals and, uh, for uh, 2050. And there is, um, how to say, a uh, stopover uh, done, in, uh, which is planned for 2030, and just to see where are the results in reaching the, these goals, and after to, of course, adapt the climate plan according to the result that uh, we, we will be in, in 2030. Uh, so, we, uh, the, the uh, Paris local municipality decided to get also uh, a climate um, contract, a climate plan contract with the private partners, with the private company, and with the public one. And we sign this contract with the uh, uh, 
local government, and it's a win-win contract because, in one hand, public habitats uh, tell that he is getting involved in this uh, to, to to reach to help the local authority uh, to, to to reach these goals, and in counterpart, we receive subsidies from the local authority to realize. Uh, all our activities and to adapt all, all our activities in matter of reaching the goals. And it's very significant because without this, uh, this financial subsidy, it, it, it will not be possible to, to, to reach these goals because it's more expensive. We have to be clear. And there is a financial balance which helps us a lot. Great, uh, Patran. Thank you so much. And it, it, it's leading to 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 my to my next question, because the the finance is uh, is the engine behind making this transition. And what is not completely well written in your excellent climate strategy is the way that you are using uh, the sustainable development goals. In your presentation, it's very clear. And I guess that it's uh, because uh, there is like a kind of a, a connection to uh, to the financial aspects, the business models when using the SDGs. Can you give a, a few words on how you're using the SDG framework in in your concrete uh, in your concrete work in your demonstration projects on a strategic level? Because SDG yes. is not something which has really been adopted out here in, in, in Korea. Mm -hmm. Yes, sustainable goals development, uh, it's a wall. It's a wall. So that's the reason why we try to, uh, to work with, um, in our two legs. The first leg is more dedicated in the operational uh, point of view. I mean, uh, with you, the energy consumption, to, uh, to uh, develop uh, new uh, materials, to the use of new biosourced materials to develop the uh, circular economy and so on. And the other way, the, on the other legs, it's about the relation we have with our partners and uh, with our tenants. To get our tenants more, particularly, more and more involved in this new way of consulting the city. I mean by that, that all what we do is always done with our tenants and we make our tenants stakeholders, policy makers of this political strategy plan of uh, to, to be a neutral carbon city by 2050. This is also our conception of our sustainable development goals. And, and, and precisely that aspect of, of engaging the different sectors in the, in the society, when you have new concrete projects, when you have new technologies, how do you go in and validate the business behind it, uh, specific okay. for, for energy retrofitting? Do you do some kind of a business model validation or how do you uh, estimate it? Yes, we, we, we do have a business model evaluation, uh, but to be honest, as usual, uh, we, we, um, we are at the crossroads at this moment regarding the financement, the, the funding system, because in France, social housing uh, is funded by public subsidies coming from the state or the local authorities, uh, and also thanks to, of course, the revenues of the, of the rent. And the third pillar is uh, the loan at the very long term, between 40 to 60 years, that we get on a very low rate that we get from a, a financial state body, which name is Caisse de Depot. Uh, and the, the main issue is that there is less and less money in the pocket of the state. So we have to face with a great decrease of public subsidies from the state, which is, uh, and 
this is very useful uh, for us balance by uh, the, uh, the the financial uh, uh, subsidies we receive from the cities but it's not the true for all the french cities this is very specific to the paris situation so it means that now we have to be a kind of uh, self-funding uh, to find a, a self-funding system and for that we knock to the door to the European Commission that can help us uh, to provide subsidies from the Europe uh, for promoting uh, climate plan, for instance, but also to uh, open the door, uh, which is something completely new, more particularly for public social housing company in France, to, uh, for instance, the financial green bond, the financial social impact bond, it means that we, we open the door, we try to, to work with private investors for a long-term investment, but in these two main points, social activities, social impact bound, and also green bond. And uh, uh, it becomes more and more uh, necessary to, to work with them. Very interesting. My, my, my last question, uh, Bertram, is um, that, that, that Paris have been um, a front runner in creating these type of very practical demonstration projects. Um, perhaps you are familiar with the, with the amazing um, program called Reinventing Paris, where 23 sites in, in Paris was, mm. was uh, redesigned, refigured. Brownfield development site. I see this type of project could be very interested, interesting to test here in Korea. Do you have any recommendations for Korea, how they can learn from, from your engagement of doing a brownfield development? Uh, recommendation. Well, re, uh, reinventing Paris, uh, there is a reinventing Paris one, which, which was more dedicated to promote innovative projects, I would like to say, uh, outside uh, the, the city. And there is also a reinventing Paris 2, which is more dedicated to innovative projects concerning the uh, outground, the uh, underground uh, space uh, of Paris. For instance, um, car parks, which are not absolutely not no more used, or old tunnels, we have discovered like that, a lot of old former tunnels, which are uh, with no use. So how to transform the underground land, which is available, uh, free of all uh, use, and to, to make this land, this, uh, this space, these areas useful for the, for the cities. Uh, reinventing Paris, it's not only uh, uh, an issue of architecture of, or urban planner. Uh, the, the idea it was to uh, create a concept which is innovative in uh, different items. It could be a management of the construction, the, the waste emitted, uh, the material used, the energy consumption, of course, and also to create a kind of a new way of living. So. Uh, Paris Habitat was not directly concerned, in a way it was, because we provide some part of land uh, available, but the main idea was to promote the private sector, uh, and the, the call for tenders was an international call for tenders. So a lot of private company, private architect, uh, urban, pro, uh, urban planner coming from all over the world uh, were interested by this uh, new call and uh, lot, some of them uh, are the, 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 the winners of the uh, 21 uh, sites that you, you spoke about. But it was more uh, dedicated for the private sector. Very much enjoy uh, bringing you here to to Seoul to uh, to elaborate more about the the good work that you have been doing and especially also perhaps to 
elaborate further on reinventing city i i do believe that that's uh very unique and and very impactful uh, projects that 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 you have been doing thank you so much uh, for 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 your uh, for your questions and now the um, the last line of uh, comment from from my side uh, this time to uh, to Seoul housing to uh, Ungmu Hu uh, regarding uh, measurement to reduce uh, fine dust as we all know, uh, dust and air pollution is a, is a major concern uh, across uh, Korea. And I do believe that energy retrofitting is one of the strongest instruments to reduce uh, coal power production, energy production. And hereby, reducing that, we can reduce uh, emission from the coal-fired power plants. But in Korea, I don't see any uh, report, any assessment addressing the, the externalities of, of this. I hear society are complaining about that they are sick, that they are, that they are not able to work as hard as they normally do because of air pollution. Have there been, have there been done any assessment on the positive and negative externalities the associated um, impact from air pollution is positive negative externalities an instrument used by soul housing thank you research and studies on air pollution are carried out by the Ministry of Environment and other research institutes to find out about externalities, especially in terms of impact from outside of Korea. As for ourselves, SHCC, uh, we recognize that externalities are out of our control. So what we can do is for Seoul Metropolitan Government and SHCC to implement policies to reduce emissions in our urban construction and reconstruction projects. Uh, as you said, once we save energy through green remodeling, we can mitigate climate change and also we can reduce fine dust. So that is an approach that we have in zero, uh, zero carbon and energy housing project. And also we have also we have uh, concerns about reducing fine dust and reducing energy consumption through our projects and one of the ways to do it is to reduce dust and fine dust produced in the construction sites of our public rental houses and that is why we establish fine dust reduction policies that are in place currently And, and precisely the, the, the dust in the construction sector, is that something you perhaps can elaborate a little bit about both dust, but also a greenhouse gas emission? Studies in, in Copenhagen have shown that, uh, that the construction sector are contributing to around 6% of the all CO2 budget for the city. In Oslo and Stockholm, it's uh, around 10 to 12%. CO2 emission only from the construction sector. Could you please elaborate uh, further about if you are promoting electrification of construction machineries or if you have uh, schemes where you are trying to create dust free construction sites? Is that something which are in place in, in, uh, in your sites? Yes, thank you for the question. Uh, Seoul Metropolitan Government and SHCC did introduce a new program uh, from this year where we prohibited the use of aging mach aged machinery in um, construction sites. But actually, on the part of SHCC, it was from 2017 that we prohibited any use of aged machinery in the construction sites of our own public uh, houses. In the long term, uh, we will have to also electrify these machines. At the moment, they use diesel uh, or um, other uh, oil sources, but now we will have to gradually electrify them. And we will have to... But we do have a long road 
ahead in terms of electrifying our trucks to, for example, electric vehicles. So uh, in connection with our plan to become carbon neutral by 2025, we will also have to work toward transitioning our construction vehicles into electric or hydrogen powered vehicles. I just need to get that uh, precise. Uh, are you aiming for carbon neutrality in 2025 or was it 2050? Uh, by 2050, by 2050, we uh, will we have the target to uh, achieve carbon neutrality, and this was announced by the Moon administration. So it's by 2050, not 2025. Yes. yes. Um, also, in the Korean Green Deal, there is a, a, a strong focus on on. Um, on uh, accelerating the use of uh, hydrogen cars and hydrogen uh, uh, machineries, uh, construction uh, machineries as well. I can see uh, from around Europe, uh, cities have been working a lot with the green, circular, sustainable procurement. Is uh, the, the procurement uh, methodology to enforce sustainability as something that you are working with, putting criteria on how much waste which need to be recycled, the, the age of the construction machineries, the, the numbers of electrical vehicles. Are you using in your tender material, uh, are you trying to enforce sustainability in, when you are calling for tenders? Yes, we did prohibit aged construction machinery. Uh, by aged, what we mean is machinery older than 15 years old. So they are prohibited to, from uh, being used. And also we do have tender requirements where they are forbidden to use these aged uh, machinery and they are required to use eco-friendly machinery only. All of this is stipulated in the contracts. As for recycling, uh, in Korea, actually, we do have a high recycling rate. The wastes from construction sites are recycled 80 to 90 percent already. And we hope to push this direction further so that, for example, uh, soil and uh, wastewater and all the other wastes generated from construction sites are fully recycled. And just for, for us to, to understand the, the political framework for, for your development projects, um, the, the, the requirement for an environmental impact assessment, is that, um, is that a strong political instrument for you to push a green agenda? Or is the, the environmental impact assessment um, uh, a kind of a, um, a, a a kind of a permit to to operate your construction how do you how do you uh, use the 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 eia instrument as such when you are doing massive uh, energy retrofitting projects or, or or new construction in korea we have the law for environmental impact assessment so that when you have a project above a certain scale, you're required to have an environmental impact assessment. And in the assessment, there are certain criteria set by the state in terms of air quality, water quality, noise, uh, smell, etc. So you have to actually meet all of the criteria in order to proceed with the project. Also waste, uh, soil and also uh, greenhouse gas emissions and the greenhouse gas absorption have to be assessed in order to assess the impact of the, the project on the environment. And also you have to have countermeasures for all of these environmental impacts. And and all of the results are discussed with the Ministry of Environment to actually minimize the env uh, environmental impact. This is part of the legislation. This is not just for getting grants for the project, but rather this is really uh, supporting our transition toward uh, green and carbon neutral country. 
also yeah. we have a climate change impact assessment as well which measures uh, greenhouse gas emissions as well as absorption in the project so that we can actually assess the impact on climate change specifically and that's the plan that we uh, have for our future Thank you very much for your questions, Peter. And uh, this was a great opportunity to hear from experts on the site who have real life experience on the site. So we actually uh, overran our schedule quite a lot. We have to wrap up by 6 30. We have to uh, wrap up the forum by 6 30, and we only have 10 minutes left. Regarding the environmental impact assessment uh, in Korea, it's not the local government spontaneously doing the assessment like in other cities, but rather in Korea, there's a law that mandates you to carry out environment impact assessment before getting the approval for the project. And once the project starts, you have to do the assessment once again. I wish we had more time because I personally also have uh, unanswered questions to Copenhagen and um, French speaker, but I only have what, 10 minutes left. And after watching four presentations, I identified three main questions that we can discuss. So I will ask uh, Copenhagen, LH, and then Paris Habitat, and then um, SH in that order. First of all, to Copenhagen. Your goal is to achieve the carbon neutrality uh, for the first time in the world by 2025, and its progresses are made well. And also recently, the heat wave is increasing in Korea. And what kind of weather extremities you experience due to global warming? Since we have some technical problems, uh, so uh, we would like to hear first from the Paris habitat. So I would like to ask a few questions to Paris Habitat. So the Paris has a goal to achieve new uh, net zero by 2050, and a lot of efforts are now currently underway to achieve the target. And recently, you have engaged in various kind of projects, including the urban farm and also the vertical greenery projects. So can you please introduce some new projects that have not been pro uh, pro pronounced yet? or that are not in the action plan. Yeah, will be better. Thanks a lot for the, for the question. I hope that it will be uh, easy to, to, to see for you. This is just to show you a, a map of Paris on all the, the dark point, a rooftop in which we could, we could, uh, uh, delivering a green rooftop and transform them in, in green rooftop. It's, it's merely, how to say, four, 460 hectares of flat roof in Paris that could be transformed in green area. Of course, we need for that that the, uh, the, uh, the, the authorization, I mean, uh, that the, the agreement from the uh, private owners of this, uh, of this building, some of them are belongs to Paris Habitat, so work to. And just to give you an example, that urban farming, green rooftop, uh, is something which can be very concretely developed quickly, in a way, in Paris. We still have uh, in Paris uh, Habitat nearly 25 rooftop which are dedicated for urban farming. I uh, remember last time, it was uh, one, one year and a half ago, when I came to, to Seoul uh, and to, to meet uh, a friend of uh, Seoul Housing, uh, they show us uh, a kind of green farm also, and uh, a rooftop where kimchi on the roof, 
uh, and kimchi done and uh, it was gardened by the tenants themselves. And so from this experience we, we view in Seoul, we, we tell us that we can do the same and we have to do the same. That's very clever. Why not? And it's something which is very successful, not with kimchi, but with French potatoes, with strawberries, with apples and so on. And, and it works very, very, very well. So um, it's not directly in our climate plan, but it's, it is included in the same way, in the same strategy to produce, to make the city greener and by the other way, to help our tenants to become their own producer of what they eat. You can hear more examples from Paris, but in the interest of the time, I will have to move on. And also, there seems to be some connection issues. I ask for your kind understanding. Uh, moving back to uh, the speaker from Denmark, please let me repeat the question. So can you Do respond you to the question that I asked before? Okay, fantastic. Um, yeah, shortly. Uh, we have mainly seen uh, um, more rainfall, uh, more stormwater, uh, and we adopted a, a climate adaptation plan uh, some years ago, uh, turning uh, the climate change into to, uh, to a positive benefit for uh, greening the city. Um, and and uh, the next thing will probably be uh, combating uh, uh, raised sea level. We are uh, currently planning for a, a completely new uh, city or a, a completely new development in the harbor uh, as part of, of uh, um, uh, fencing the city towards uh, the, the raise of sea levels. We also, to a certain degree, do see droughts and and uh, more heat season, more heat during summer seasons, but uh, until now, this has not have had such an impact on us as in many other countries. I think that was it. Thank you. In Korea, we have a sustained heat wave, and it seems that in Europe, you have a sustained uh, rainfalls. I wish I could visit um, Copenhagen in the near future, and also I wish to uh, meet you again in, in a different forum in the near future. Uh, now the time is almost up. Our speakers from LH and SH, I will ask you to make your last comments before we wrap up this session. Yes, first of all, I'm very happy to be part of this public housing forum. And also, I hope that we can, it was a valuable opportunity for us to exchange our uh, thoughts about uh, public housing uh, in the context of environment in particular. And I hope that this is not just a one-off event. We can continue to uh, monitor the progress and continue to have regular discussions and collect feedbacks based on our discussions. Uh, as I said, I really miss my memory in Copenhagen. And as you can see, the profile picture of my messenger shows my picture uh, in Tivoli Garden, as well as another picture in Copenhagen. So my profile picture is still um, stopped at last year. Now, I hope that uh, our Korean New Deal will continue to develop with this meaningful start. And I hope that we will all work toward a safer and healthier planet. Next. Our speaker from SH. Yes, it was good to see you, um, even though it was virtually. I really hope that COVID-19 will, will come to an end so that I can meet all of you face to face. A few days ago, 2050 carbon neutrality plan was announced and 
Seoul metropolitan city is the capital city of Seoul. And perhaps Seoul metropolitan city can aim for a more aggressive target of maybe achieving carbon neutrality in 2040. So, so um, next year we'll have the mayoral selection for Seoul. And I hope that the mayor will announce an ambitious goal so that we can, for example, have a stronger energy uh, saving schemes and also uh, uh, carbon emissions cap system so that our country as well as Seoul metropolitan city can actually speed up um, our carbon carbon neutrality. Thank you very much. Uh, we're living in the era of COVID-19 where everything seems to have stopped for a while and that is what made uh, the themes today all the more meaningful. It was a meaningful forum and I wish we had more time to discuss more and uh, I'm personally very sad that we have to conclude it here. The next time you visit Korea or Maybe the next time we visit Copenhagen or Paris, I do look forward to uh, exchanging more thoughts and ideas face to face. Until that day, I hope that we will continue our um, networking and exchange of ideas. Uh, this is not the end yet because we have a final remark. This ends uh, the third session. Thank you. Thank you very much for the participants of session three. Now uh, we are nearing the end of the fifth public housing forum international. It was an opportunity for us to learn about the different examples of public housing in uh, different countries and cities around the world, as well as to discuss for the way forward in terms of public housing. I would like to once again extend my gratitude to all the speakers, the discussants, and the chairs for uh, being with us at this forum. And now I would like to ask Director of Division Chan Song Yi of SH to make a final remark. And also he will introduce the host country for next year's sixth public housing forum international. Hello, as I've been introduced, I'm Chen Song Hee of SHCC. Uh, at the moment, I'm very excited, personally. I am very happy, very excited. There are two reasons why. Number one, uh, we've had uh, we've had a successful forum this uh, this year, and we have had so many different um, ideas. Uh, thrown around and I look forward to continuing this dialogue next in next year's forum. I would also like to give my words of gratitude to our chairs and our speakers, our discussants. Thank you so much for your passionate engagement and uh, it makes me very hopeful to see such passionate engagement and passionate participation of all the participants. So personally, I'm very happy to see this. In Europe, I know it's a very inconvenient hour of 5 a.m. or so, but still you joined us in real time at this very early hour, and still you are so passionate in your discussions. Um, thank you very much. And I believe that what we uh, have in common is that we love our citizens. We want to make our city more livable, more pleasant. And that's what brought us all together despite the difficult situations. Also, I would like to thank everyone who helped organize this forum. We've been preparing for this event um, for about two months now. I would like to thank Mirapa Agency for preparing this excellent forum. Thank you so much for your work. There have been some technical glitches in the beginning. However, uh, it's inevitable in this era. And also, I would like to thank Aryong Kim, our um, uh, MC, for uh, moderating this event with a, with a beautiful voice. Thank you so much. Yeah. And also... So we've had three sessions. During the first session, we talked about public housing supply models and then uh, resident service and then climate change. Uh, these were big topics under which we had various discussions. To share uh, my opinions on the forum, public housings are becoming more and more important against the needs of the era. And also we will need to continue developing public housings. 
especially against the backdrop of COVID-19, a possible economic crisis, and so on. Uh, during these challenges, we will face a greater need for more robust public housing system. As for the residents who are already living in rental housings, we will have to provide them with the right services so that they can continue to live in these houses. And also we will need to work for the cohesion among the residents and better resident services so that we can actually prevent the NIMBY phenomenon that we are all afraid of. And we can actually overcome the opposition um, toward uh, public rental housing projects. I was so moved to see the great presentations, sharp questions, sharp answers. And I do agree with everybody else that we will have to see each other again so that we can uh, track what we have achieved during that time and, that, and so that we can share our accomplishments we've made based on our discussions today. This should not be a one-off event and it is not going to be a one-off event. Uh, this uh, this was uh, one very important uh, forum in the history of these forums. And now I would like to announce the next host country of the forum. Uh, it began with Asia Public Housing Forum. And we collected opinions from all the participating countries. And the final decision of the host uh, country was reached. Now I would like to announce the next host country. Do you have any like a drum drum beat? No. <laughs> no. Okay. Congratulations to Paris Habitat. You are the next host. No. I am very thankful that Paris Habitat accepted this offer of being the next host and I look forward to the great forum in Paris next year. This year due to COVID-19 we could only see each other through the screen but next year I sincerely hope that we will be able to meet face to face and I hope that we'll be able to actually visit the sites in Paris so that we can see with our own eyes how Paris is responding to climate change and also, Mr. Chang Hyun An, I hope that you will be able to revisit Copenhagen because he, he loves Copenhagen yeah. and that uh, he will be able to check the climate responses in Copenhagen with his own eyes. And that um, and also he can meet with our speaker from Denmark in, in face to face, perhaps. We have uh, Mr. Brett from Paris Habitat. So could you give me some comments about how you feel about being the next host country? Well, well so first of all, it's a, a great, great, uh, how do you say, uh, for uh, uh, accepting to uh, our candidature. And uh, of course, we, we do know that this is a very important uh, forum. And uh, what I do believe, which is important too, it's to create the link, to create the bridge and professional uh, good practices exchange between ASEAN social housing production and providers and European social housing providers. Uh, so that's the reason why we, thanks to, to, to you more particularly, and thanks to Seoul uh, Housing, we are, it's a great honor, really, and also a great pl pleasure for us, but it's a great honor for us to, to, to be the next host of uh, this uh, forum. And we are uh, going to, to work with you and we all the uh, uh, distinguished uh, speakers and uh, attenders to succeed as well as you do it, this, this next uh, forum. But, uh, it, it's a great challenge because you organize it so well. So it will be very difficult for us to be at the same level. But we will try to do our best. <laughs> Thank you very much. I would like to ask, I would like to thank our speakers from uh, all the countries. And next year, I really hope that we won't be wearing the mask. And uh, I will see you in Paris. Bye-bye. Okay.